Yeah, what's going on everybody? It's Al Pac King Carter here, the Superman of YouTube. You already know what it is. I'm checking in for that NBA 2K12. I got another edition for everybody. Now, it may look like I'm going a little bit backwards, but to tell you the truth, I'm reading up on all of this, you know, as I see it. Now, today's topic is play system and play calling. First of all, it's not going to be like it used to be last season, you know, with these same old typical plays that you're running for every team. And, you know, the plays where as though you can't do much with your team because the AI isn't good enough or they missed a shot mainly. All these plays are going to be set up for certain people. Now, what 2K has done, they have broken it down into eight different sections or key groups, whatever you want to call them. They got the pick and roll ball handler. That's the man who dribbles the ball around the screen in pick and roll situations. Now they have the pick and roll screener. That's the person that sets the screens for the ball handler. They have the isolation where of course you know you got to create space in a one on one opportunity. They also have the low post where of course post plays are called all the time. Now a change that they call were high posts. They have high post plays. That's for when you receive the ball at a high post extended. They have the cutter plays, where of course, you know, a man cuts to the basket, you hit him, he lays it up or dunks it, however you choose. They have the screen mid. This is when a player comes off a screen for a mid-range jump shot. Something like a Ray Allen, Rip Hamilton type of guy. Now they have the screen three-pointer. Now this is mainly Ray Allen, because he's the only person I know that come off a crazy screen and hit that three-pointer, man. Real talk, they, they broke it down into eight key groups. I'm online right now. I'm reading this as I go. All I can tell you is that it's it was like four different play types, right? And and it's like they assigned them to a certain type of player. Like, okay, say you have a person like Carmelo. He's a high octane isolation player. They will let him call a certain amount of plays for himself. So say uh say his play type is isolation, he gets traded to another team, right? Now, of course, you know, in certain playbooks, that coach may not have that many isolation plays. He may only have about 10 ISO plays. That means that Carmelo Anthony has the ability to have access to all 10 of those plays, including another three slots for any other plays off screens, uh, post up situations, you know, whatever, whatever you choose. Right now, um, it seems that the regular play calling interface remains unchanged. Um, this right here will be for PS3 and Xbox. I, I don't care what you say. I'm, I'm PS3 for 2K11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. I'm going to be on PS3 for life. So I'm going to tell you this now. You can tap LB for Xbox and R1 for PS3. Now what's going to come up is a set of icons. Now what you can do is you can choose from that icon and that player what you want to do. So um, I don't know if you've seen the picture that's you know running through this video but say you are, are Dallas right and you want to pick a Dallas for high ice you would click a if you want to do B it comes up in all different types of plays but you can't have you can only have I would say five plays assigned to a selected play type that means at the bottom of the menu you will see a RT button or uh, what is it? RT is what for PS3? I don't know. I don't. I don't know. I don't care. But you can you can choose more pages of the plays. Like it's not just five plays anymore. You get pages, people. Pages. So don't don't mind me. I'm hype. Don't worry about me. I'm I'm just hype. Now, another thing that they got is a four play limitation. Right? That's totally gone. What they did was they stacked up the playbook. So what's going to happen is. If you want to call plays for different type of stars and and different players, you know, coming off the bench, it's it's whatever you want to do. You know, you can personalize it however you like. So say you have Shannon Brown coming off the bench for Kobe Bryant. You can have Shannon Brown on the bench with his plays already set up before he even gets in the game. Beast. Period. Beast. That's all I want to say. All right. Now, uh, the next thing I want to go over is the quick calling play you know these are like oh my god the directional pad you already know what you gotta do give me the iso play you already know you want to iso just give me iso but what i want to tell you is they added something a little different 
instead of going isolation pick and roll uh post up all of that they actually have it to where as though you can pick the best play in that situation in the game so if it's fourth quarter two minutes left instead of you calling isolation click the run the best play option see what they make you play see if they want to say Nowinski get open or Fernandez cut to the basket or Butler post up or kid isolation like it's excuse me it's up to what the actual computer is going to do but it's the best play for that situation all right now moving on this is one take you guys one take they have a new thing called living brand i mean not living i'm sorry living branches now what it is is uh the caesar or the cesar whatever the guy name is that handles all the you know 2k development and everything what they're trying to do is they're trying to get up to date on the current play call system so what they've actually been doing is they've been listening to the community this is why we're getting the best call plays possible right now now what i'm gonna try to do is i'm gonna move along all right they 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 have something now called persistent offense now in most basketball games you know it's been easy for a couple defenders to take away your best offensive option you know denying him the ball or you know is and it leads the offense to being forced into freelancing you know certain stupid plays at the end of games whereas though you won't even be able to win which is which is in my case the dumbest thing out there but you know sometimes they do this now this year the offensive technology is highly upgraded right what happens is for stars they give you plays in a playbooks that have a capital P next to the name of the play. What happens is these plays are set up for scores. If you want Carmelo Anthony to post up on a high post, it's so easy. All you got to do is come down with the ball with Billups. And what's going to happen is they're going to run a pick and post. Not a pick and roll. Not a pick and pop. A pick and post. That means that Carmelo Anthony is going to set the pick. You have the option to drive to the basket or Carmelo Anthony come and post somebody up. Now everybody will shift to the other side of the floor so Carmelo, Mar look, Car so Carmelo Anthony can have the stage against a one-on-one -on -one defensive person just to kill them like yo it's so crazy like you got listen the link is going to be in the description i want you guys to see this as well as what i'm doing because i'm looking at it i've read it like four or five times but this shit is outrageous i'm sorry for the cursing all right now what's what's happening is all right when nba 2k12 is like product like the production value is going to be crazy this year so what they did was they put the user versus computer user versus user efficiency at the same you feel me you will have the same persistent offense offensive plays online and offline and it won't make the game stray away from what it's built for it's built to play actual basketball so like the mention above you know there are plenty of simple and effective plays that allows everyone you know like beginners and you know seasoned experts to actually have the opportunity to become Phil Jackson. If you wanna, if you wanna have the coaching aspect of the game in the game while playing, you can do that this year. Now, out of bounds plays, big step up this year. I mean, big step up. You can run an inbound protect the ball, secure ball plays, which means the 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 plays are have a set goal to get the ball to a specific player, and if possible, usually your best free throw shooter. Which means at the end of the game situations, if a person is down three points and they don't want, say, somebody like Steve Nash to get the ball, they have those inbound protect and secure ball plays to actually try to get the ball to Steve Nash. So that means they're actually going to be setting plays this year. Also, they have the quick two plays. All right. They got the plays where they pass it to a person for a two, quick two points. And they also have plays where you just pass this somebody for a quick three. So this, the AI is going to be amazing this year. Now, post plays. They also have it where though you're, if you're inbounding the ball, you can automatically go right into a post play. The, the, the guy, like, say, you know, you ever threw it to uh, Yao Ming, you know, just because you didn't have anybody to pass it to, that will be an actual set play. Everybody will flush across, you know, the floor, and then you that guy will have the stage. They also have the alley-oop opportunity. Now, we already know a lot of people have been throwing alley-oops from inbound passes a long time, but this time it is an actual play so you can yo, you could do so much with these passing plays oh my god now the quick strategy options now for offense right 
if you have your offensive strategy, you know how like sometimes you have to put crash boards up and all of that nonsense, you know, as soon as the game starts. You can actually do this every possession. They have something called um, space the floor, you know, for spacing against, you know, the ball handler so he can run around, you know, all these people. He don't have to do all that. He can get straight to the rim if he wants. You got the screen for shooters where people will be setting off ball screens while you're up top at the point guard position. You have the leak out, which means the outside player leaks out to the shots to get a breaking point. You know, somebody that cuts to the basket and then comes back out. You know, also you have the collapse and rebound. This is where, you know, people attack the boards. It's basically crash boards. Also, you have the coach default where that's his offensive strategy and you don't want to mess with it. You know, you just leave it at default. Now, they have the same thing for defense. They have pressure shooters. You already know what that means. Lock down the paint. You already know what that means. Focus on the stars. So you want LeBron and Wade not to score. Focus on them too. Bosh, I won't consider him a star. Now, they have another option called constant pressure and also coach default. Now, last but not least, to wrap everything up, the, the end of the video, they have put a ton of effort into improving the strategic elements of NBA 2K11. It's been a long time, and I mean long time since, you know, a person could actually compete in this game, you know. So, I just want to say to everybody that 2K12 is taking a giant leap forward this year. I mean, giant. Now, I'm out. I hope you guys liked the video. I did it all in one take. <laughs> <laughs> um, this is IKC signing out. Thanks for sticking with me for a little bit, you guys. Peace.